Hello everyone, this is Tom from Thai Landscaping. Welcome to all the new subscribers and thanks for coming back for the second part of this project. In part one, we installed the drywall and tied in some of the downspouts. In this video, we're going to work on keeping the runoff from the neighbors out. We will use this pile of excavated soil to make a levee slash planting bed. Here are a couple clips of Dawn showing how much water is coming in from the neighbors. And you can see here, that's the neighbor. They still have water sitting in their yard. You can see here, this is how high the water got. And you can see all the water that's on a neighbor. In the future, the customer will add good topsoil to make the bed larger and plant a row of evergreens. This will be for privacy and to stabilize the bed. In this video, we're also gonna tie in the remaining downspouts finish grading the yard, add grass seed and straw. Thanks for watching. I didn't do much taping today and there's a reason I keep referring to this as a planting bed. We need to stop the water coming from the neighbors. But many towns have a rule that you cannot change the grade within 5 to 10 feet of the property line. This planting bed will be used to plant a privacy screen. It also helps keep our water in our yard. And it just happens to stop the rainwater coming from the neighbors. Tom will work on the dry well, bring in some more topsoil, and then we'll start uh, finish grading the yard so we're really not going to be able to get grass to grow now. And it's beautiful out. It's like 45 degrees. What we're going to do first is we're going to connect this downspout and this downspout. This right here is a block that the big deck used to sit on. So this block goes way down and there's another block cemented underneath. And we know that because here's one that they took out already. They're cemented together. That is what the deck post sat on. There's uh, one here. The deck that they used to have was all here. It went around the whole house, all the way down to there. So the customer asked us if we can try to get these out. So this one looks like it's connected to the house a little. Tom brought his little jackhammer drill and he's gonna try to get that out for them. And eventually they're gonna fix these stairs and they're putting a paver walkway here and then a little paver patio over here maybe. That's what we're starting on. It goes really deep. This one doesn't look like the other ones. Ugh. 
<laughs> this one is cemented to the wall. Got it. I saw the whole thing move a little bit. You got it. Yeah, Tom's working on that. I'm working over here. a lot of bricks. <laughs> There's like a hole. Yeah, so this is what was underneath. This is a wall. It might stop here. It goes that way. It could have been a raised patio at one time. Here's a quick look at the trench. There were so many cinder blocks and bricks. And here, there's some sort of wall that he had to go through. And right where the mini sitting is where the catch basin is going to be going. And there's all the debris that Tom dug out. It's always fun digging and older yards. Just go really, really slow. He just came out to say the electrical line's here somewhere. He doesn't know where. So I'll watch. Let me get my glove. Okay, right now I'm watching for electrical lines, any water lines, anything important. Okay, we're right across almost from the electrical line. So we think it might be straight out here. Okay, that was interesting. Tom's just setting up the slope down to the uh, dry well system with the downspouts from up here. There's two downspouts. What? what do you mean? Right there the bottom of the pipe. Okay. And this one's higher because you want it to slope down, which is easy. Here. How many bashers we need? This is getting regular, right? Okay. Let's 
good. All right, it's getting late. So let me show you this before we close anything up. We'll probably be here tomorrow morning to uh, finish this. We need to put a lot of dirt under the pipe and bed it in. So there's the two downspouts. Going into a Y, following it down. Very There's nice the catch basin. Long. This pipe is pretty flat to the ground. And there is a tie in to the uh, drywall system. Tom's going to just fill in this one. And then we can uh, bed it in nice. The other one by the house needs to be filled in by hand. So Tom's working on that swale. I'm gonna work on bedding this pipe in. We did put bricks under this pipe. There's at least two bricks under each section. So there's no way that it's gonna have a big belly. We're gonna need extra dirt over here. Since a lot of this void is all those right there. This is packing in real nice. everybody it's a very happy day it's nice and warm we are back on this job we just got over an inch of rain and I'll show you how well this is doing we're not even done yet customer is very happy there are some things we just need to finish I'm going to show you this wheelbarrow so this is about how much rain we got last night Ugh, it's the palm of my hand that's four to five inches of water in this wheelbarrow from last night's rain. And it just stopped this morning. So let me just show you the planting bed slash levee. So since they get so much water from the neighbors, and you can see here, that's the neighbor. They still have water sitting in their yard. You can see here, this is how high the water got. And you can see all the water that's on a neighbor. Normally that water would all be on our side. You can just see here that it did breach over to here. And there's more water over here. And you can see the level. I'll get up on this mound. You can see the level of how high the water got. And you can see that it did breach here and it went over and went right into the drywall. Drywell worked great. It took up all the customer's water. There's right there, Tom marked, and there's two spots up there. So it really did well with the amount of water for our customer. Then this planting bed goes around. And you see here, this is the other neighbor that we get a lot of water from. See how much water is in here. That also, I think, breached right here because this one's not as high. It just needs to be a couple more inches high. I don't know if you can see that. I see the water level on the fence. That's how high it got. And they still have water there. 
Uh, Tom just emptied a wheelbarrow. I'm like, where'd that water come from? He just emptied a wheelbarrow. As you see, it's going down. And this will go around and go that way and then down to there. But you can see all the water from the neighbor. So this is the part where we're filling in by hand. That must have been full of water because it's wet to the top. Water's all gone. Now you are going to plant uh, some green giant arborvitae, maybe some Leland cypress, some uh, screening trees in here. So they want this brought out, brought up a little bit for when they do their planting. And same thing over there, they want that to look a little nicer and not just look like a levee. Because <laughs> they are planting in it, they want it to look like a nice planting bed. And then they'll do the planting in the spring and they will uh, mulch it and do whatever they want. So they want this brought out later and make this a little nicer and it's just a little bit higher. And then once the trees and everything are planted in here, that should keep everything uh, from eroding into here. And then you put some fabric in uh, mulch and uh, it should do well. But I said for breaching over here, look how nice. This was not graded yet. So there's water standing in our little trenches from the tire marks. But the water's going down really fast. The rain only stopped this morning. And that's going down fast. So this dry well is going to work like a charm in this backyard, especially alongside this uh, planting bed. All right. And up here worked great where the uh, downspouts were put in. So this dry well actually has five downspouts and one some pump into it. Like I said, we're going to fill in up here by hand because uh, we like everything packed in really nice under the pipes, which I did seed in the pipes yesterday really well. And the additional rain helps even more. So now I want to pack this in by hand to get this flat since it wasn't flat before and I remember there being a big dip here which I'm filling in a little otherwise it'd be a big hole I'm just gonna make it look as good as possible for now I said they're gonna be redoing this whole area in the spring more rain. It's raining again. Let me put you guys away. The water on the other side of the fence is down now. We just made this little swale here, filled it in a little bit and continued it here. So no water pocket sits there. We graded to here. You had that big puddle here. It's very soupy and muddy. So that's it. That's it for there for right now. When we come back, once it gets uh, warmer, we will finish that. And I don't know if you can see over there, but they still have water under that fence on the other side. The planting bed is here now, and that surely helped keep a lot of water out. 
there's still water on that side. All right, we're back on the job. It's been close to two weeks. The customer is now working on their planting bed slash levy. And looking good. They had to bring in a lot more soil. And uh, they got their uh, plastic barrier up. And today we are just doing a touch up on the grading. And Tom's adding the rest of the soil to this one area right here. So here's a look. We had more snow. We had two rainstorms. It just rained a couple days ago for three days straight, but not a lot of rain, but steady. So everything's looking good. This is nice and solid. The other thing we're doing is we're putting uh, clean outs and vents in these two downspouts. The previous person didn't put them in. But the most important thing is on this sump pump here, we are going to be putting a uh, freeze protection in there just in case it ever freezes or anything happens. They will have the ability to unscrew it and let the water run out. It's always good to have some kind of freeze protection on your sump pumps. I'm just going to bring some soil in. We don't need too much. And then touch up the grating. This is how we get the soil in the backyards when we only have a small amount of soil where we only want to put like a little bit here and a little bit there instead of bringing the big machines in the back. These uh, gas powered wheelbarrows are amazing. They go through mud, up hills, up ramps if you saw any other videos. Let me just get by the pipes where he can't get. Right now he's tracking it in, which is mini excavator just have a little hump right here he's got to take down
from here to here. Looks like he got a high spot. See, being on a machine, sometimes he can't see just the little divots. So that's what I'm here for. But he seems to be taking care of them. He's uh, making everything pitch towards that catch basin. So this is the way we do our freeze protection on sump pump discharge. Um, I like to do the plug into a T. Normally we would do a TY, but my plumbing supplier did not have a TY for inch and a quarter, which is what this is, which is not normal. Normally a sump pump discharge would be inch and a half or two inch. So we glue this in. And then there's a threaded plug that goes in here. And how this works is if this was ever to freeze in the line, the customer could come out and remove the plug and then the uh, sump discharge would just come out. I know there's other ways to do freeze protection on sump pumps, but this is the way we like to do it. A clear primer. We like to use clear glue when we're doing the downspouts, if possible. And, and, we, we, and we always use primer if it's under pressure. Yes. Well, we've got this clear primer. Looks very nice. Looks pretty good. Okay, that looks good. So, just this one, right? On here, yeah. Looks like it's good. You can see in there.
So I just wanted to show you that this is how we do all our downspouts. I, we like the way it looks and it's functional. So uh, how this works is you can clean this out by removing this grate. You can put a hose in here. If it's got to be cleaned out, you can put a snake in here. Uh, if this were ever to freeze, uh, the water will just come out here. So it, it's, it's form and function together. Uh, this is how I like to do the sump pump discharges. Like I said before, uh, our, normally I would have a TY plug and then a threaded plug. So this plug can just be removed if this was to ever freeze. Uh, normally it would be a TY, but my plumbing supplier did not have a TY for inch and a quarter, which is n not normal. Normally this would be an inch and a half discharge. So one thing I wanted to tell you about dry wells is it's important that they're vented. Uh, the way the other contractor installed this, you got downspouts. He had a clean out over there, but it was had a plug on top, so there's no vent. So it come, the water's gonna come down and go over to the drywall he put in over there, and that's a small drywall, only about 200 gallons. So you got three downspouts and a sump pump taking in half of this backside of the house. So in a one inch rain, that's about 650 gallons. You get 650 gallons going into a 200 gallon dry well. So what happens in a big storm, once that fills up, there's nowhere for the water to go. It's gonna back all the way up and come up and overflow the gutter. So that's why we vent it. We got four vents down there in the chambers, plus the 20 inch catch basin acts as a vent. And so if this ever gets overwhelmed in a big, rain like a thunderstorm something quicker than this can percolate the water is going to come up through those vents sit on the surface and then it'll percolate away it's never going to come up and overflow the gutter we got all three of the existing downspouts refitted with the uh, freeze protection and vent also a clean out so that's what it looks like Unfortunately, we were doing this in the winter, and the place we normally get our topsoil from is covered. And covered topsoil is awesome. This is not covered, and we just had so much rain the last and snow for the last two weeks that this is not going to be as easy because all we're doing is putting a thin coat over this where we dug. So I'll spread it out a little. Hopefully it will dry up. We'll see how this works. Looks pretty clumpy. Since this is so clumpy and wet, it's easier to take it a little bit on your shovel and do this. Because we only need a little bit just to hold the seed. And then we're gonna put straw. So that's fine. because we have everything um, graded already. 
Let me bring it down here. Right now I'm just spreading it out and then I'll uh, break it nice once we get it all down. seed and straw and uh, cut these risers down and then uh, we will be done with this job. Like I said the customer is taking care of all this soil for the planting bed slash levy. They need a lot more soil. A lot. We put that uh, big pile of dirt that we came out of this drywall hole which I've Remember, it was over here. That's where Tom was stockpiling all the dirt to do this planting bed. Oh, we just need three, four grates, right? So I'm just doing a touch up raking and then Tom's taking out all the and Tom's just taking out the uh, containers with all the pipe in there. The forks for the mini really come in handy. Really liking those. Oh, let me put this this way. Breaking out pretty nice compared to how clumpy it is. Tom's going to cut down the risers with the grates on. So we make a little mark at ground level. There you go. If you remember when we put this in, there was a big white pipe at the bottom. That keeps all the stone and all the stuff from collapsing into the uh, hole once we pull this up. And that's our riser. It's got a couple holes. It's got a plug with a hole in the bottom. Great on the top. Water can go in there. Any sediment, debris will get trapped in the bottom. The customer can just pull that out, take off the grate and dump it. And nothing will go into the drywall. Yeah, we did offer to uh, come and do the final uh, dirt and uh, seeding in the straw in the spring or just come in and doing the seeding in the straw in the spring and uh, they said no they wanted it done now so that's why we're doing it now now this seed probably will not germinate until the ground reaches a certain temperature for a certain amount of days so you're looking at probably April but you never know. The way the weather's been, we can get a really big warm warm up in February or March and it will germinate earlier. 
they will have to probably see it again in the springtime. It's gonna rain tomorrow morning, so it's really good. This type of straw has a little uh, tacky glue in it that's supposed to bind it together so it stays better in a certain area instead of just like moving all around. So we'll see. Tom is loading up the trailer right now, putting all the tools away, the mock truck, the mini excavator. That takes a lot of time and I don't mind doing straw. <laughs> Except this straw is really nice. Much easier when you put it in a wheelbarrow. Sometimes I forget to bring it and then I'm carrying a bag around. Then it's a pain. Let me help you. Right. I got what I'm doing. Bad idea, let me drive this thing. <laughs> ah. I wasn't driving very good. I need some practice, I think. Right, we're completely finished and we seeded and strawed. Customer said he's going to take care of that soon because that's a big part of keeping the neighbor's water out of the yard. Here's a look at the uh, straw. It's starting to get dark and GoPros do not like when it gets dark so I have to show you this before. We finished picking up everything. Well, here's the yard. Now we stressed a lot to the customer that he must keep all this straw from getting on here when it rains. We are supposed to get a quarter inch of rain tomorrow. Tomorrow, And uh, we told him multiple times and he seems like he will definitely be on that. So I'll start up here and just show you a recap of everything. Five downspouts. So there's one here, 
one here and the other three you saw us do not too long ago and they empty into this catch basin so any leaves or debris will fall to the bottom of this catch basin and then the homeowner is aware that he has to take the cap off and clean this out every couple months if he gets a lot of leaves in there uh, if he gets nothing in there then he can do it once a year but this has to be cleaned out and all everything falls to the bottom and there's holes in the bottom with stone underneath so it never holds water and then that goes into our, our system which is down there and that drywall will hold roughly 2,000 gallons now keeping the neighbor's water out is a major part of this project because the water comes up to about that black that top of that black uh, thing he just put in that's like a bamboo plastic bamboo shield to keep bamboo out that's what he's using so once he gets the dirt to the top of that that will keep all that water out of here so he will not get those giant lakes in his backyard anymore and even when he had that giant uh, lake that we showed you the picture that was gone within six hours so they have very good drainage soil here but he wanted to take care of it because who wants the water creeping up to the house what we did to his existing sump pump and downspouts so we added a freeze protection vent and it's also used as a clean out and that empties into there again any debris will fall to the bottom they have to clean it out if they get leaves in there so none of it will go into the drywall that we put in and it's very important to make your customers aware that they must do that to keep the system clean it's not very hard all right so that is it i really hope you enjoyed watching our video 